I just wrote out a little bit of the thing and uh, uh, hopefully you can bear with me. But as you know, I'm here to announce that I will not be returning to Kansas State. I am happy to tell you I have two special job opportunities ahead of me. First, to be a full-time husband to my amazing wife, Megan, who for the last 42 years has waited for me, waited on me, and waited on others for me. Now it's my chance, hopefully, to wait on her. My second job opportunity is to be a grandpa to four very active grandkids. When I came to K-State, I told many people, my number one goal was to be a great grandfather. Hopefully I can live up to that goal. When change happens like this, the people that are most affected, but probably the most overlooked are the players. I just met with our players earlier this morning to tell them the news, but I also emphasize to them my number one priority right now is to help them through this difficult situation and hopefully help them move forward to new and better things. I hugged and had to share tears with many of our players. And I emphasize again that I'm there for them and that'll be my priority over the next couple of days to help them. My next concern is helping our staff who has dedicated endless hours to K-State basketball. They have families that they have to take care of and it is my goal and concern to help them hopefully get jobs. I apologize to them last night for not fighting for them three years ago after we went to the Elite Eight and won the Big 12 again to protect them with long-term deals. Hopefully K-State will do the right thing and take care of them for what they've done for the university. I truly love K-State. It was amazing to me when I arrived at K-State and I've told this many times how many coaches, ones that were fired, ones that left, told me I would love Kansas State and Manhattan. As I expressed last night after the game, I'm really proud of what we've done and accomplished here. And I still want K-State to be successful. Earlier in the season, one of the social media people asked how we can get more people in the stands. I would tell you and challenge you just like I do to myself and to our players. You might look in the mirror. There's no doubt winning helps. I know that everybody knows that. But the negativity that surrounds K-State sports at times is really, really sad to me. This is the only school that I've been associated with that I am afraid to give our recruits and have them connected with our social media because what they will hear and see. I know other coaches in our department feel the same way. Hopefully uh, with that can change, maybe with the new coach and, and everybody can be positive about K-State and K-State athletics. I want to thank John Curry and President Schultz for 10 years ago, ironically meeting me in New Orleans at the Final Four and bringing me to K-State. I also appreciate the loyal support of President Myers, who was in our locker room and lived every play, cheering for us every game. It's been an amazing 10 years for Megan, my family, and I to be associated with K-State and the Manhattan community. We have made lifelong friends and appreciated the love and support of the K-State fans. I'm not sure right now what my future is in front of me. As I said before, I hope we can be a more caring husband and also be a, a loving grandfather. I have a strong faith and always have been blessed 
by God's plan in the past. And I believe uh, something good will happen. Many have asked me and encouraged me to tell me that I'll continue to coach. We'll see about that. I know when I got back last night and told my wife the situation, she said, you're not done, and said, don't tell people you're retiring. Maybe there's some AD out there that would appreciate a coach that graduates players, wins championships, supports the university, and the, embraces the community, and maybe brings some good players with them and has a successful program. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate K-State Nation. Uh, it's been an unbelievable pleasure to be the coach at Kansas State. And I hope I can always come back to Manhattan, Manhattan and enjoy Manhattaniness and the people that are part of it. Again, thank you. Appreciate everybody. Thank you, Coach. We'll go to questions now. Uh, we'll start with Kellis. Hey, Bruce. Uh, sorry, I had to go out this way for you, but but thanks for all the help over the years. It was it was fun covering you. I just wanted to say that up front. Um, what what was it like? What were the discussions with with Gene? How, how did that all come about? Over the last I mean, I'm not getting into that. I just you know, it's just it happens. Uh, it's been a long two two months. To be honest, uh, you know, the COVID was very hard. Uh, I wasn't around the players for 11 days. Uh, we had six, seven players you couldn't practice. A uh, lot of painful nights, a lot of tears, a lot of prayers. But, you know, we survived. I was hoping for the players' sake that, uh, you know, we could have a good finish. I think we were capable, but obviously it seemed like every game something happened that, you know, didn't go right. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, you always wish you could have done better, but it didn't happen. So, um, you know, all we can do is just, you know, help the players, help our staff, and then be there for our, for our families. I also want to ask you, you guys had the, the program going at such a high level after your first seven seasons and then it teetered off the last three. In hindsight, is there anything you wish you'd done differently to keep that momentum going? I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, I, I thought the, the the year after the championship, you know, we were close. We, um, I think some, you know, you wish some of the guys would have been more connected. And, and that year, obviously last year, COVID, the young team re regrouping was, was, you know, in a really good league was tough to deal with. I, obviously, we made progress. I don't know how many coaches have reached out to me and said, you made some of the biggest improvement in the country. Um, you know, and, and, you know, so we, we made big strides, but, you know, we needed to make a little more strides. And that's, you know, it's just, it's just tough. Um, you know, it just uh, sometimes, you know, uh, the injuries, my wife calls it the curse of the cats. And I, I'm not sure what it was, but just that's sometimes how life is. And, and you know, credit to our players, our staff for always getting up and uh, meeting the challenge and, and doing what, uh, you know, what they, they needed to try to win. And we just, you know, as I said, it was even last night, Mike has that wide open three, shoots 40% from three, makes that thing. We go up, the place gets excited. Probably we get the momentum. But uh, we miss it. They go down and run off three or four straight baskets. And, uh, you know, we couldn't get a win. And la last one for me, if, if you were recommending this program to another coach, what would you tell them? What kind of potential do you think is still here? Well, I think you're, you're not, you don't know what is going to happen with the players, obviously. You know, the portal changes everything. I think that's every school in the country. But, uh, you know, K-State's a good place. And, uh you know, we got, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy to recruit to because it's hard to get to. We don't have a great recruiting base. Um, it's a hard job and, you know, it, but it's a great job. And what we've always said, once we get guys there, we always had a chance to get them. And, but it was, it was tough getting there. 
um, you know, I would, you know, I would tell you that um, I know I probably put in more days recruiting than probably any other coach, maybe in the country. Uh, I had some people tell me I went out more days than anyone else. Uh, guys like Drew Timmy, I saw as many times as you could. Uh, uh, EJ Liddell, Jared Allen. I mean, I could go on and on, uh, you know, guys that we recruited. And, uh, you know, you, you put in the time, Jeremiah Robinson Earl, I saw him win three state championships, freshman, sophomore, junior year. You know, so it, it you know, sometimes you, you, you have to, we got, you get fortunate with players like Dean and, and Barry. Uh, all you, you, if you're going to come here, you better come here to work uh, because it, you got to find guys. And now with the portal, you hope that, you know, it probably changes everything, I guess, a little bit, makes it a little easier. Obviously, we took advantage of it this year. Thanks, Bruce, and enjoy your time with the grandkids. Thank you. Uh, next question to Michael. Good morning, Bruce. Uh, how much of a toll have the last six games, and for that matter, the last three seasons taken on you? Uh, I, I'll be – I told the coaches last night and, and the players, I probably – Thought I had more energy and zip this year. Watch more film late into the night. Some of it because I couldn't sleep, <laughs> but um, put more time and and you know than I've done in a long, long time. And uh, you know, I did it take a toll the last two months. Yes, uh, you know the you know because uh, you wanted to have the guys be successful. It just kept going against you. You know, you kept hope and praying that things would go our way and it didn't. So, uh, but I love coaching. I love, I love the players. Uh, my favorite time is writing up practice. My second favorite time is being at practice. And uh, my third favorite time is interacting with the players after practice. So, it, uh, you know, that part of it is, is still my love. Uh, you know, if I don't coach again, I, you know, we'll have to see on that. Uh, you know, I'll be teaching somewhere with some kids working on fundamentals or something because it's what that's all I know and that's all I love. Might be my grandkids, but I'll be out there uh, doing something. And are you leaving the door open if some opportunity would arise for next season? I think I said that. Yeah, I think I said that. And coming here, working through Coach Katie, obviously, you had a background of knowledge about K-State. Just where do you think you fall within the lineage of uh, Hartman, Winter, Kruger, and, and all those previous coaches? I think I answered that last night. We've, we've done some pretty good things. It's been 45 years and only two championships. And uh, I, I'm proud of that. And I did it with supposedly the other guys. I did it with our guys. I did it the right way I graduated people we went to the elite eight um, there is a special group of coaches though and, and the one thing I I begged and asked for was we need to or K-State now not we anymore needs to really promote our history uh, I I fought for Tex winter drive I asked for Lon Kruger to be honored I I've asked for Jacob Pullen and uh, Michael Beasley and Rodney Magruder and then hopefully Dean Wade and Barry Brown to have their banners up. There hasn't been a banner put up in a long time. I asked for the coaches to be acknowledged that the great lineage of coaches that you just brought up from Tex Winter to Jack Hartman to Jack Gardner, their names should be up in the rafters um, to really promote K-State basketball. That's important. And uh, I, I hope somebody listens. I hope they do it. Obviously, they didn't listen to me because I asked many times. Hopefully, they'll do it in the future. Thank you, Bruce. I appreciate your time as always. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to Todd Lebo. Hey, Coach. I'm just a question about last night. I mean, you obviously had that long speech at the end of the press conference. Was was that said because you knew that was going to be the end for you, or was that the catalyst afterwards, timing-wise? Did you find out afterwards that you were going to resign? 
I think uh, I've been preparing for this for a long time. And, and um, I told one of the administrators, he, he said, do you really want to go through this? And I said, yes, I have a good answer for everybody. And I, I hope I impacted, obviously, I, was, I, I can't tell you how many text messages from coaches, from player, from former players, uh, you know, and, and I, I spoke from the heart. I hopefully, I spoke the truth. And uh, hopefully it meant something to somebody. I know it did. And I can't, my phone went, kept buzzing till 3 a.m. and then started again at six. And um, I haven't even, and I got calls that I can't even answer from, you know, Coach Katie keeps calling me. I haven't been able to even respond to him and Tom Izzo and on and on, Rodney Magruder, the players, uh, Brian Cardinal, you know, just, it's just endless. I, I just, uh, you know, it makes me feel good because uh, I told the players I got into coaching, got into teaching because my dad and mom, uh, they thought there was no better life than to help others. Um, and that's, that's been my goal. And uh, hopefully I've, I've impacted people and helped them with, with their lives so now they can help others. Um, nice. everybody in life needs love. I was blessed with amazing parents, met, blessed with an amazing wife and family. Uh, everyone needs hope. Um, you see it in the Ukraine right now. I would, I would tell anybody listening, please, you can help. I, ju I just sent stuff uh, to help people I know over that I've done clinics with and um, everybody needs hope and then everyone needs a purpose. And uh, I think that became so obvious during COVID, um, you know, and, and hopefully I can find some purpose here in the last, last chapter, but we'll see what happens. And uh, I noticed you, you thank John Curry and uh, you know, the previous president and all that. I didn't hear you mentioned Gene Taylor. Is that an omission by? Uh, yeah, I just, John and, obviously John and President Schultz brought me here. Uh, President Myers, obviously, and then Gene, I appreciate. Casey Scott, uh, Gene, just to, you know, transition. It's not easy when you got a new coach. Uh, I told him last night, appreciate that he stuck with me. Obviously, he got to enjoy an Elite Eight and a, a Big 12 championship, but doesn't happen very often. And then also Casey Scott, uh, who really was a, a positive liaison in between uh, when John left and Gene came and, and helped us. And I always remember, and I said it at uh, when we probably people told me one of the most special moments in Bramlage history when we celebrated the Big 12 championship, uh, winning against Oklahoma at Casey Scott had the um, – you know, forethought to uh, not have uh, the state permit that year so we could honor our seniors. And then obviously it ended up being a, a magical day and moment to, to celebrate a championship. Thank you, Coach. Good luck to you. Thank you. Uh, next question to uh, Mitch Fortner. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned the social media and how you felt, you know, you didn't want your players looking at it because it was so negative. But, I mean, did you feel personally was, disrespected by some of the fan base or did you also feel maybe at the start you never got a fair shake by some people? Uh, there's there's no doubt some people have said that to me. I still remember if I, I walked in, there, there were protests. They wanted Doug Gottlieb as the coach or something. It was the uh, most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Um, you know, I, I talked last night about 13, winning the championship, knowing, you know, I didn't get credit. Uh, but as I said, you know, I, I heard from every one of those guys today and last night. They're probably my closest uh, group and, and uh, of players. They come back. Um, you know, they they love Manhattan. They love K-State. They, they appreciated being welcomed back. Um you know, and, and, you know, it's not just me. It, there's other coaches in our department that feel the same way. And I didn't say the players, I said recruit. Because um, usually you want the recruits connected with your associate. So they get the love. 
But when there's so much negativity out there, I'm not sure you even want it. Um, you know, so that it's that part. I, I'm just trying to help the next coach. And, uh, you know, I don't think sometimes somebody thinks they're doing something or they got some point to prove, but they're really hurting the whole program, to be honest. So, um, I, again, I love K-State and I want it to be successful and, uh, you know, can only wish the best for all of the, all the coaches. Thank you, coach. Yep. I will do one last question to Mason. Bruce, when, when you look back at your time at K-State, whenever, you know, more reflection down the road kind of kicks in, what one specific memory or moment will stick out to you as kind of the embodiment of your 10 seasons at K-State? It could be something major or something minor that none of us have any clue ever happened. Um, I, I don't think there's any doubt the you know, the Oklahoma winning the championship was special. Um, uh, the winning, losing at, at, at uh, Oklahoma State and still coming home and uh, – I never in my wildest dreams thought Kansas would lose to Baylor. And my wife and I were walking our dog. Um, the baseball game was going on. We we're close to our, at that time, we were in a little town home close to the stadium. And we heard horns and fireworks. And, and then my phone started buzzing. And, you know, I, I all of a sudden, I, I like grabbed my phone. I said, something must happen. And there John Curry called me and said, coach, congratulations on the championship. And I kind of was numb to it, to be honest. So it, uh, it was special, but there's no doubt to go to the lead eight um, and do it without the best player on our team. Um, you know, it was one of my proudest, you know, uh, coaching moments. Um, you know, to not have Dean and still do that uh, was really, really special. Um, you know, I just obviously wish, you know, I said my goal is to be a, a, a great grandfather, which it still is. My dad never got to be a grandfather, passed away early. Um, and, uh, you know, my second goal was to get K-State back to the final four. We got close. We didn't get there. Hopefully sometime in the future they can enjoy that because it uh, it is very, very special. Okay, we'll do one last one with Grant and then we'll uh, be done. Hey, Coach. Um, I want to ask something you said about yesterday. Yesterday you said that that 2013 team was one of your most together teams as far as how you felt you got yourself into that team. So I want to ask, what made them stand out as that team that is one of the most together teams that you had? I think they, I think more than anything, I, I guess my whole word would be connected. We stay connected. We post, um, you know, from, you know, all of them, obviously Shane being on the staff, you know, from Rodney, Rodney to DJ to Jordan, Martavius, Omari, uh, uh, they, I just, it was, we went through a unbelievable, I think the transition and um, our staff, how we welcomed them and embraced them and, and cared for them. And, um, you know, I think they really appreciated that. Uh, Will, I don't want to miss somebody. Will Spradling was so, so important. Uh, Angel was, you know, that was one of my sad moments when he left. Uh, but to have him and coach him for a year was amazing. And, uh, and, you know, Dean and Barry's group is also really, really good. And they are together and enjoy each other. And, uh, you know, so that, uh, you know, all, all, all those. But that, that group was, uh, I don't know why. It's just, you know, I guess maybe they're a little older and they still appreciate it and they're always back. You know, for Thomas Gibson, you know, like I said, come in with his kids and to the gym and hug me and I can play with his kids. And, uh, you know, it's a special, special bond, special memories, and those guys will talk about that for a lifetime. And then I wanted to ask, you know, about – you brought him up a little bit, but Barry Brown, and how, how much heart did he have to get you guys to that, you know, Elite Eight without what you were saying is your best player in Dean Wade at that time? Uh, I think the, when somebody else asked about a special moment, and I've talked about it before, uh, when Barry called his own practice on that Sunday, uh, it, it – 
we I always tell him he saved our season. He saved maybe saved our job. And uh, I just joined this morning, and uh, you know, it's, uh, this is amazing. And uh, you know, you always always appreciate that those guys. And I hate to not to mention somebody Cam text this morning. Um, from overseas and, and you know all those guys there those groups are special and that's that's what makes college sports special uh to be honest it's uh you know it's uh you know that and that's what i said from the beginning you know college sports is a business the sad part is the players become pawns in it at times and uh hopefully i can i can do what i i can do to help our guys um and, and help them move forward in their life and uh, have good careers in, in, in life. So. And then the last thing I got Great. for you. Thank you, Grant. I do. I got that lavender pullover for you. Um, <laughs> Thank you, I'll Coach. I'll give it at the office for you. I appreciate that, Coach. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> See you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Wyatt. All the best.